Welcome to our review on infrared radiation. When we're talking about infrared radiation, we're talking about part of the electromagnetic spectrum. And we're going to find out a lot more about that throughout the physics course. When we are talking about an electromagnetic wave, these are waves that are electric and magnetic waves that are able to travel through space. So at the bottom, you've got a diagram that represents them. So you can see the red ones that are going up and down in the diagram. Those are representing the electric field. And then the blue ones that are kind of coming in and out of the screen, those are the magnetic field. In the diagram at the bottom there, you can see the full electromagnetic spectrum. And as I say, we're going to keep dropping back into this throughout the physics course. So you can see that we've got radio waves on the far left working right the way through to gamma rays on the far right. And you can see that as we're going from left to right, then the wavelength decreases, but the frequency increases. And you can also see that the wavelength gets shorter as you go from left to right. Now, a key part of this is if we think about the visible light in the middle there, then what we find is you can split white light into the spectrum. Now, in that spectrum, you're going to have red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo and violet. And what we actually find is that the wavelength is going to increase as it goes from blue light to red light. And if we consider where infrared then sits, you can see it's to the left, the visible light there, which tells us that infrared has a longer wavelength than visible light. If we consider the source of a lot of the electromagnetic radiation, then within our solar system, that would be the sun. Now, the sun itself is going to emit all types of electromagnetic radiation, but we on Earth are not going to be exposed to all of them from the sun. And the simple reason that we're not exposed to all of the radiation the sun emits is for the simple fact that we have an atmosphere. So the atmosphere on Earth is not going to block the visible light or infrared. So that means we can see and we can actually be warm but it will block a lot of the harmful electromagnetic waves and prevent them from reaching the surface, which means that life can exist because without our atmosphere, that just wouldn't be possible. So how do we actually know infrared exists? Because we can't just look at it and go, oh, look, there's infrared, but we can do a relatively simple experiment to prove its existence. So the way we'd actually do this is shown in the diagram there. So what we do is we place a prism in front of a screen and then we've got our thermometer with the blackened bulb to the right of the red end of the spectrum. Now, the reason we place it there is because that's where infrared should be. If you think back to the electromagnetic spectrum diagram. So as the light passes through the prism, it gets split into the spectrum so we can see exactly where to position our thermometer. And then if infrared is present, the temperature should increase on our thermometer. So it's not just that infrared keeps our planet warm and lets us exist. We've also found a few other really useful uses for infrared. First thing we've done is we've developed infrared cameras. Now, these are the ones that we can use to detect animals and people in the dark. So when the police are trying to find someone at night, then they can use these infrared cameras to turn them up, as you can see in the picture at the bottom there. We can also use thermal imaging or infrared cameras to detect the amount of infrared that's being emitted by an object. And one of the common places that we use this is if we're actually trying to investigate how much radiation is being passed out of a house to identify where the energy loss is occurring. So you'll get a photo like the one at the bottom there and anywhere that it's the white or the red, that's where it's losing the most radiation. Anywhere that's blue is the least. So we can see straight away in that photo that this house is losing an awful lot of the heat from inside through the roof. What we find is that these work because when the object has a higher temperature, it will emit more infrared radiation in a given time. So the increased amount of infrared is then picked up by the sensor in the camera and then we get the variation in the colours. One thing we should remember is that all bodies emit and absorb infrared radiation. But if we're looking at a particular body that is at a constant temperature, 
then we can say that it is emitting infrared radiation at exactly the same rate as it's being absorbed, hence why the temperature doesn't change. There is one type of object that's a little bit special here, and it's one that's going to absorb all of the radiation that hits it, and that's something called a perfect black body. So a perfect black body will absorb all the radiation that hits it, it won't reflect any, and it doesn't transmit any. So what we actually find is that this isn't necessarily something that exists per se. The closest we've got is a material called Vanta Black, and the two pictures at the bottom are actually showing you what Vanta Black does. Now, the one on the right is actually a thin layer coating a bit of scrunched up foil. Even though it looks like a puddle, it's not. That foil is actually scrunched up. It just looks flat because it's not actually reflecting any radiation. And on the left, those two statues are identical. The one on the left just has a thin coating of Vanta Black, and you can see it's completely removed the three-dimensional appearance of it. What we should remember is that anything that's a good absorber is also a good emitter. So a perfect black body is also the best possible emitter. And the radiation that's emitted by a perfect black body is called, quite conveniently, black body radiation. If we now come to think about how this looks in terms of the wavelength and intensity on a graph, then you've got an example to the right there. If we've got an object that has a constant temperature, then it's going to emit radiation across a continuous range of wavelengths, as we can see on either of those lines. So both lines are at a constant temperature, either 750 or 1000, and you can see that the wavelength is being emitted across a range there. What we do find, though, is that there is a little peak. So we have the highest intensity of radiation at one particular wavelength. And you can see it's different with the two lines there. So it's actually determined by the temperature. If we increase the temperature of the object, then the intensity of the radiation it emits is greater at all wavelengths, as you can see from the 1000 degree line being above the 750 in all cases. But the peak intensity is going to occur at a lower wavelength. So the reason for that is that the shorter the wavelength, the greater the increase in intensity with the increase in temperature. Hopefully at the end of this video, you can now describe what infrared radiation is and where it falls on the electromagnetic spectrum. You can describe how we can use it and also the effect of changing temperature on the wavelengths emitted.